open now for a time of testimony and sharing uh, the things that the Lord has given to us. I thought of a couple of examples of what a testimony is. Uh, you know, only a witness can give a testimony. Otherwise, it's a false witness. In the court of the law, uh, we, they, they bring in witnesses to testify. So a testimony is the report of, one, of, of the person who saw what happened. And some examples of that are the children of Israel that were led through the Jordan River from the wilderness into the promised land. And the Lord instructed Joshua to have the people pick up stones out of the riverbed as they went through. And they made an altar out of those stones. Well, how else would you get those stones unless the Lord parted the, the river and took you through it? And so those were stones of testimony. They, they were there. They were in, they walked through on dry ground and got those stones. And another example, of course, is Daniel in the lion's den. There had been other people that went into the lion's den, but how many people came out? Daniel came out. He could testify. He had been in the lion's den, and the Lord shut the mouth of the lion. And so you can stay the night with the lion uh, when the Lord has shut his mouth. So he had a testimony that that he could tell other people he had been in there and had come out. Every other had gone in and not come out. And so uh, we encourage you all to uh, bring some of the stones that the Lord has uh, given you as you uh, walk through the, uh, the rivers of, of uh, trial, the rivers of joy. Uh, there are many rivers that the Lord parts and leads us through. And each one of those uh, his experiences gives us something that we otherwise would not have been able to take hold of. So uh, Sister June is going to start this time and then uh, just encourage any of you to come and share with us. I'm going <clears throat> to start off, but I'm going to actually do this in reference to the renewals themselves and the relevance of the renewals. I have been at every single Refreshing Waters renewal. Israel gave us an example of high days. There were times within the year they were high days for the people of God. And the renewal really is a time of uh, high day meetings. And uh, we do it annually. Some of these were annual remembrances. Now there are, uh, we have, in my mind, there's Resurrection Lord's Day. There's the renewal the table in the wilderness, the preaching festival, and our regular meetings. That's kind of the order that my brain kind of puts these high days in. But the renewals are unique to any other kind of gathering. Although some things are enjoyed in all of them, the, the renewal really is more pronounced in some things. One, the involvement, the way that the format in the, the renewal is, there is uh, an encouragement to profitable involvement. We have the, the, the able ministers who labor in the word and in the doctrine. Our God is blessing them and has given them power to edify and to take the, the different aspects of the theme of our renewal and to, to focus it so that we can, whenever we're all done, what we take away is a more full-orbed view of that particular mm -hmm. facet of our salvation and of our God. This is one of the primary things I've seen. During these times, I have seen more of that, that development of being able to think in terms of us and the body instead of me in this place among the body. A lot of my thoughts kind of parallel what Sister June was talking about. I, uh, However, I won't be able to say it as well as she did, but, but I, I, uh, I'm thankful for, for brethren like Sister June who can speak for a long time and every word is worth listening to. And every, I never tire of hearing things like that. Uh, first, in 2 Peter 3.18, Peter's final exhortation in that epistle to to those who obtained a like precious faith was that they grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Each time I have come to the renewal, uh, 
I recall my first renewal was in St. James, Missouri. Now, I don't know which one that was. I, I, don't, keep, I don't keep track very much. 11? Has it been that long? Uh, wow. But each time I come, I've seen growth. Uh, and I, I, I greatly admire these young people. I've spent time this year speaking to a lot of them and they're growing, it seems to me, they're growing quicker spiritually than they are physically. It, it's amazing. And I know that's because of the fellowship they're in. I, uh, and I see in the speakers growth. Uh, the same speakers that I, that, that I listened to that year, many of them are the same speakers I listen to now <laughs> and tremendous growth. It's just wonderful. And that, that's how I can keep growing because the ones I'm listening to are growing. And uh, I, I have always said that I want to be around people who will help me grow and and I that that very thing happened just this morning. I I know it. Uh, my test. I did a testimony some years back. I, and I don't even remember when that was. But but I remember saying in my testimony that that I know I I didn't appear as to like I knew a whole lot. And I would walk up to groups of people at the renewal and I would listen to what they were saying, and I was learning. And you know that hasn't stopped. I, I'm, uh, I'm more comfortable. I have more to say now. I see more. I see things more clearly. But even this morning when Brother Given and Brother Boyce at breakfast was speaking about language, I was learning. Uh, I, it, it, it doesn't stop. Uh, I'm so blessed by that. And I always want to keep myself in the fellowship of those with whom I'm going to be spending eternity. And I determined this some time back, and I, and I, that's who I want to be with. I want to be with with whom I'm going to be with. Amen. The other great blessing in the last two years has been for me, and I know it has been for for all of you, is the Homestead and the uh, Woods Brethren who are a part of us now. It's, what a wonderful thing. And, and to watch them grow up so quickly in the Lord. Uh, and uh, this, this, is a, this is a testimony of their faith. Uh, I had a couple of... Uh, A couple of things that, that that I've been blessed by. Most recently, is, is starting with the series that Brother Given is doing on the Lord's Table, and following through with this renewal, I've been able to see the sacrifice of Christ more clearly. Uh, I, I'm very thankful for that, because what that has done, it it has caused that each time I'm around the table now on the Lord's Day, I, I, it's, a, it's a greater and more blessed experience for me. Mm -hmm. uh, I feel like that my fellowship with the Lord at his table has, has increased because of that. So I thank the brethren for that. The other thing that I, I thought of, I, I don't think there's a statistic on this, but boy, with all the statistics we have today, there could be. Uh, how important the fellowship is. When Brother Aaron's sermon is mentioning resisting the devil. And I was thinking, when I'm not in the fellowship, or when I'm not with the brethren, how many times I have to resist the devil. But when I'm in the fellowship, how many times I don't have to resist the devil. 
it speaks greatly of uh, not, uh, not forsaking the fellowship, the gathering of ourselves together. It's, it's a lot easier to be with the brethren. But anyway, those are just some of the things I thought of, and I thank you very much for your time. I was uh, baptized into Christ in the, uh, in, uh, the summer of uh, 1983. And in that, in my baptism, I was baptized into Christ, but I didn't know that. I had read in the scriptures about you know, Jesus and, and, and some of the things that the apostles said about being baptized, and I said, that was, that was good enough for me that I needed to be baptized. And I had an insatiable uh, hunger for the word of God. I would read the scriptures any and every time I had available. But it, as I look back now, it was like I was in a, a chariot. And uh, I had no understanding unless a man would come and open these things up for me. And the, uh, the first renewal I attended uh, back in 1998 was that, was that turning point when, when I began to get some understanding. I... Uh, I met some brethren there. I didn't know they were brethren at the time. I didn't know much about anything at the time. But they, uh, they began to speak of a lot of these things about God and about his Christ and salvation and the word of God. And uh, These were things I, I desired. I desired and I wanted to have. I had, wanted to have what they had, basically. And uh, met, some, met some brethren. And they began to open these things up and... Uh, Started some, some wonderful times of fellowship that I had never experienced before, ever. And uh, we, we've, uh, we began to meet on that, that Friday night, I believe, right after that very first renewal. And, I, and I'm here to, to, to confess that we haven't stopped meeting on those Friday nights ever since that, that renewal. So there was, a, there was a benefit experienced right from the beginning. And the, the, uh, the benefits continued to grow, not only in the in the opening up of understanding and hearing of the, of the word of God through the word of God, but it was through the, the people of God. The people of God were, were speaking the truth. And uh, this, was, this was a unique experience for me in the sense that every time I met with these people, all they ever talked about was God. It didn't matter if it was on, if it was on Sunday or if I happened to stop over at their homes. And what, 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 we, what was the discussion about? It was always about God. It was always about Jesus. I figured that there had to be a slip up sometime. You know, I, I, I would maybe catch them at some in, or, you know, inopportune time and we'd be talking about something else. Now, don't get me wrong, we do talk about other things, but the main focus is always the Word of God. I was, I was instructed, I'll, I'll say it that way, by, by one of the brothers, Brother Al, as we, as we met, he kept telling me, you've got to get the Word of God in you. You've got to get the Word of God in you. What do you mean, get the word of God? I don't know what, the, but, but I, I sat there and I listened. And that word, see, it, 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 it was engrafted. And it, and it began to grow as other brethren began to talk about these things. And that was at these, at these renewals. When I came to the renewals, as you said, it was an increasing this. It was always, it was always uh, I hate to say the word better. It was more, it was, it was giving, it was, I was actually beginning to take hold of these things. You know, there was, there was, a, there was a, a, a partaking. I knew about what it meant now to partake of these things. These things were not just something that was way out there that was possible, but, but it, was, it was what God had promised would occur, and it was occurring. Not only, not only in myself, but I've seen the rest of the, the people of God growing. The other thing that, uh, uh, that, that really encouraged me was, was the brethren. Brethren, they, these were ones who who continued to faithfully declare the word of God. And that was a benefit. And, and, I, and, and throughout the, the, the years since then, I got to meet a number of these other brethren, these ones who, who uh, I, had, I had determined each year that I wanted, to, I wanted to try to meet somebody that I hadn't met before, Some, to, to know about this, these, these brethren a little bit more. As I, would, uh, as, as I found out, there would be, there'd be a greater and a, and a, and a more uh, tighter-knit Fellowship with these brethren, not not only because we, we were we were in the Lord, but that we had oh we had these desires for for these things, and it was there was a mutualness of 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 of, of sharing and a mutualness of desires of the same things, and 
And I just wanted to commend the, the brethren that are here that, uh, for your faithfulness into this. That, uh, and, and to say that, that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. There are things that are said here, not only by the ones who are proclaiming the word here, but in this fellowship that we have afterwards, as, as some of the brethren will call it, the afterglow, the afterglow of the meeting. Well, there are, these are, there are things that are, that are said there that you may not think that uh, it's going to have any effect, but I'm here to tell you it does. You, you, remember, you remember specific instances of, of, of uh, my memory's not as good as some of the brethren I can that, where they can remember 35 years ago. I was sitting here and I remember this being said, but I do remember some of the things that, it, that, that, have been, that the brethren have said as we were sitting around the table, particularly at the, in the early years for me, that's all I did was listen because I really didn't have anything to say. I didn't, I didn't know anything about God. I didn't know about his Christ or his salvation. But brethren were always constantly talking about the Lord and his, and his Christ and his working in salvation and heaven and glory. And this all sounded very good to me. But, uh, so I, 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 com I thank the Lord for you all and for your faithfulness and, and to continue to, to proclaim this good news. I want to thank uh, Brother McCoffer for speaking today about God being satisfied in Christ. And a couple years ago, I had a rare opportunity to take, uh, go home with Brother Given, and he asked me, Brother Rodney, are you satisfied with Christ? And my answer was, in my mind I said yes, but my answer was, I am amazed. I'm amazed at how everybody here loves the Lord. I'm amazed how everybody here wants to talk about their Lord. And as the, since I couldn't come last year, those words were on my mind constantly. Am I satisfied with what Christ done for me? And I can honestly say, yes. And as I get rid of those things that keep me, drawing, keep me from drawing closer to Christ, my satisfaction grows that much more. So I want to I wanna thank all of you, Brother Given, for letting me come to the renewal because it regenerate energizes me and no matter what happens between the renewal where I'm at I'm always looking forward to coming back mm -hmm. we uh we are very grateful to to know know you all and uh I'm representing the what was it the, the woods homestead is that is that what is that we are <laughs> the Delaware brethren uh, we uh <coughs> we just uh, we have great joy uh, uh, meeting with you all, and uh, I just wanted to share with you uh, some of the things by way of testimony which, which drew us, or, or at least me, I don't know, you guys can speak for yourselves, I kind of just said let's go, so, <laughs> but this is, this is what drew me, <clears throat> uh, God is the emphasis, and, and, and I suppose this is, this is the case of all brethren, is that they, re they want God, and I, I, well I'm just convinced that the people of God, they want the word of God. Then, that we really uh, the world can offer the world, so so we'll let them do that. But what we want is God, and uh, and so that was uh, well, that's just good. Uh, I really uh, appreciate how the gospel is unashamedly uh, proclaimed, and uh, and consistently proclaimed. That is that is the doctrines, the the various views of salvation that we have, the various. Uh, whether it be illumination or sanctification or justification, these things are consistently spoken about. It's not just, hey, let's have a sermon about sanctification and we'll cover, we'll cover it again sometime next year. It's, it's consistency uh, in these things. They, they need to be preached over and over and over again so that you, there is a familiarity among the people that, that you can really grow. There, there's, there's a foundation which we can build upon. <clears throat> Through those things, you, you, you better understand who God is. You better understand who Christ is. You better understand what his purpose is, what salvation actually is, and you can, those are things that, are, that you can build upon. So that was something that, uh, that was appealing uh, to me. Now, when, uh, now we've, we've been here two years, so <laughs> we don't have much to, to, to share about years back, 
Uh, but uh, one of the things that was uh, immediately recognized uh, by me is that uh, I just appreciate that you all put no confidence in the flesh or really acknowledgement <laughs> of any kind of fleshly differences that there may be. Like, well, really, who cares anyhow, right? Uh, so it really doesn't matter. We recognize no one according to the, to the flesh. Uh, and that's, uh, well, that's, that's appealing as well. Your faith uh, is encouraging. Your desire for heavenly things is encouraging. Uh, your desire for God himself. Uh, this is something that provokes one another to love and good works. Not just, not just an exhortation to do these things, you see, but the fact that people are growing in grace and knowledge. When you, just, when you can just see that in someone else, it provokes you to want the same thing, you see. And so when, when you're around people like that, that's, well, that's what fellowship's about. So when you're around people like that, you, just, you want that for yourselves. And, and you all have done that uh, for me and, and, and most likely for us. I can... <clears throat> I'm glad that there's no real associations with the traditions of men. They're not really help anyhow. <clears throat> no desire to draw lines of separation. Well, which group are you with? Uh, as, as you were speaking about. They're more of a distraction than anything else. Yeah, amen. And, uh, and that's, that's satisfying. Um, a strong desire to hear the word of God. And a strong desire to encourage one another. These are some of the things uh, in, in our short time uh, being here and, and being among you and hearing in various recordings and writings. And these are some of the things that stuck out, some of the things that, that uh, has encouraged me to, to well, we got to make a trip and we got to make plans. We, we gotta, well, we got to plan a year in advance uh, when, when we're going to uh, come out to be with you all. And, uh, well, it's worth it. People, people will, will extend themselves what they desire, they'll, they'll, they'll do whatever they have to do to, to obtain those things. And uh, so, so when you find something that is good and something that is profitable, something that's beneficial, you'll just, you'll just make plans. You'll, you'll sacrifice some things in order to, to obtain those things. And, and, and I, I, well, as, as much as I love you all, it's not so much you all. It's, it's, more, it's more that you exalt uh, the Lord Jesus. And, and so, you know, we don't, we don't want to be, uh, we don't want to be outdone by the, Queen of the South. <laughs> we, we know she's going to stand up, so we want to, we well, we traveled, well, we traveled a lot of land, uh, so maybe not land and sea, but you know, you understand what I mean. We just want to be, we just want to be around people who love, who love the Lord, and, and uh, wherever they may be, whether they're in Missouri or, or anywhere else, uh, and I, I just encourage you to do the same. Just extend yourself, because, well, it's beneficial. It's, it's worth it, and, and, and anything that you, that you, extend yourself for anything that you put out, any labor that you have in, in the Lord, any labor that you make in order to make advancements, well, he's just, he'll just multiply those things and cause the growth, and, and uh, well, we can just rejoice in that. So I just want to encourage you with those things. When I think about the renewal, those are, and not just the renewal, but just when I think about you all in different discussions that we have, it's just uh, those are the things that, that causes us to be uh, knit together. Uh, it's, well, it's the unity of the Spirit. I wish to um, speak about something that goes back a while in my life. Before I knew very much about what was in the Bible, when I was a teenager, first year away from home and college, I went to a Bible conference that was put on by some of the young people from one of the churches in town who were among them college students there. And I, I, I saw something I'd never seen before. And you do it here too, and it's a good thing. You take the words of God and you explain them, including what the tenses of the verbs reveal. And you have very good precedent in that, in that the Lord Jesus Christ did that when he was listening to the Pharisees who didn't believe in the resurrection, and he points back to Moses at the burning bush. He says, but as touching the resurrection of the dead, have ye not read that that which was spoken unto you by God, saying, I am the God of Abraham and the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob? 
God is not the God of the dead, but of the living. Mm -hmm. But I'd never seen that before. I'd never seen people who took God's word seriously and would take the very words of God and start explaining them. That was new to me, and it was good for me. And it's good for all of us, I know, but I'm saying this to you. You are... As brothers and sisters in Christ, you are among those who do this. And I saw it in January, about 1970. And it was new and strange for me. I was invited to study the Bible with this one man who had witnessed to me. And in the course of a few months, from then till about June, God turned me around about 180 degrees because I came into college with my ambition being number one, which now I understand that's an idol, but I didn't understand that then, but it's just what I was aiming at and what I wanted. And the Bible study that he had was in the Gospel of John, and um, I joined them when they were in about chapter 10, and And we'd read it and talk about these reactions that people had to Jesus. And just like you've been talking here, not everybody wants to hear the stuff he has to say. He, on the one side, for believers in him, he's he's our great unifier. But but in terms of the world and and in the, the word of God being proclaimed in the world, he's a great divider. There are some who want to hear more of what he has to say and understand what he has to say, and there's some, no thanks, I don't want that. And so that's what was in that Bible study, but God used it to reach me as he used it to reach others. And then before I was done in college, I was reaching out with the ones who had reached out to me. But you're representing to me a continuation of that. I get it of love of the truth. I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. I get it here and I appreciate that. And continue to lift up Christ. There are people around you who don't know him, around all of us that way, who need him very, very much. And God will not let his word return void. Mm -hmm. I would like to greet you on behalf of the brethren in California that we minister with and fellowship with. We have... Brother Jason and I have shared the testimony of your faith with them, and uh, they rejoice in the same God as we do. I'd like to share with you some of the milestones in my life, spiritual milestones, that have centered around the effects of the renewal. Uh, I have also been to every single renewal. I don't think I've even ever missed this session. Uh, The first renewal that I attended uh, was when I was eight. It was a very formative year for me, spiritually speaking, Uh, and being at the renewal and hearing the exchange of truth, and at that time even hearing what needed to be corrected as well. Sometimes there were corrections that needed to be made among things that were being said. And I remember listening to this as a child and, and thinking, I want to understand this. I want to be able to identify what truth is and when the truth is not being spoken. So it put this desire in me, this thirst, and I was surrounded by brethren who would allow me to sit among them and to listen. And I really, really desired that, at least in my memory. um, I, I remember preferring to be with the people who were speaking about the Lord during our meal times, during our breaks. And it, it was very nurturing for me. So it, it, it stimulated the Spirit of God, provoking me. And the following year, I was baptized into the Lord when I was nine. And uh, I can say that 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 was largely provoked by the life that I was around. I was around life before that. I was among it. Uh, but something solidified for me, and it was the life of Christ. And I have to share, too, that 
at such a young age, I often was with my cousin Rachel, who was the same age, and we would get so thrilled in anticipation of certain people who were going to preach. Brother Al, you were one. When Brother Al was going to preach, Rachel and I, Brother Al is going to preach. Brother Al is going to preach. Brother Robert, we were, oh, we were looking forward to what you were going to say. We, at that age, we were anticipatory of what was going to be said. And we enjoyed everybody, but there were, there were some extra special treats for us in that. And so I want to share that with you to encourage you that, that even here among us, there are people, they are listening. The children are listening. Mm -hmm. They're hearing, and, and they're able to soak it up. And at that time, um, the only way I could find, really, to say thank you was to draw little offerings, draw little gifts uh, to the people who were preaching. Brother Leon blessed me so much. Two years ago, he actually handed me a copy of a drawing that I had made him. Um, I was also very blessed last year, I believe it was last year, Brother Robert was recording some of the former renewals and he pulled me aside and he said, Sister Ada, I want you to listen to this. And I put on the headphones and I heard my father say, Brother Leon Bates is going to preach for us. Before he does, Sister Ada is going to pray for him. She's 11 years old and she's going to pray for Brother Leon before he preaches. So Ada, come up here. And, and I heard my little voice pray this prayer. And if I hadn't been where people were, I'd have wept because I could just, it was the grace of God. I remembered the grace of God being poured into my life at that time, even more so now, but even there in a seed-like form, there it was, and it was very, it was real to me even then, and it invigorated me. Also, among many things that happened at the renewal, the testimonies that I was given the opportunity to share the brethren encouraged me very much in my walk of faith. There was no adulation, but even just the reference of something I had said that fit into somebody's sermon or that they were blessed by, just to, just to mention that, that we're, it wasn't to highlight me, and I wouldn't have even wanted that. I'm, I'm very grateful to the brethren for not doing that because it might have provoked pride in me. And I didn't give any space for that, but they encouraged me by affirming that the truth had been spoken through me. And I needed that affirmation. And we still need that affirmation, but particularly when we are young in the Lord, not just physically, but, but at any point, when we are young in the Lord, we are to be looking in humility for the affirmation of the truth in each other and for direction in each other. And I received that. And I received it graciously and consistently. And I thank the Lord for that grace that's been poured into my life through the brethren in that way. Also in uh, 2007, I had the blessing of uh, receiving ordination. And it was here at the renewal that that was given to me. And what a profound, profound thing that was. Because uh, for me, it was not a credential. It was, again, another affirmation. We are sending you out for this ministry. And God has sent me out. Right now, I work among those who have been diagnosed with terminal illnesses. They're facing end of life. They know they're facing end of life. And I am there to aid them in the transition between this life to the next. I'm there to... Bring the gospel, whether it is to affirm and to strengthen faith that is already there, to feed the seed that is already there, or to bring the gospel where someone has not yet received it. And I tell you that I look back on that day as a point of encouragement and remembrance. It is a remembrance, a place of remembrance for me. And I'm very grateful for that. I'm grateful for the encouragement that Brother Jason and I have received if we, as we have come to these renewals. Um, a couple years ago, neither one of us were employed. 
and the church that we had been ministering for had fired Jason. So when we came to this renewal, just months after that occurred, it was a solace. It was a place of comfort and a place where we could receive some restoration. And then the following year, we were celebrating in the things that God had given us in work and in ministry. And so it was a place to rejoice in the goodness of God, knowing very well that many of you have shared in similar experiences like this. So the renewal has been just that, a renewal. It has been a place where I can identify life is here, it stimulates life, it stabilizes life. And I am stronger for it. I'm very grateful for all of you. Thank you, Brother Matt. Real briefly, I failed to mention something earlier. Uh, this seems like a, the best time to do it because all of you are together. Uh, Brother Bill Dinwiddie sends his greetings to each and every one of you and his regrets for not being able to be with us this year. Uh, I'm in constant contact with him on the telephone, and uh, he encourages me and I encourage him every day almost in the Lord I want to tell you that he is still a faithful minister and that him and sister Anna who sends her greetings also are suffering with Christ still and uh, they are very very loyal so I uh, wanted to say that and he's he's blessed to know all of you I want to testify to all to you uh, some of the things that have happened to us in the past uh, few weeks uh, in the wake of all the things that have happened as a result of the storm. I'll give kind of an abridged version of this just because of time. Uh, that God did save our, he saved our family alive and that the deliverance that he gave to us was one that was very precise as it were within a matter of seconds. If I, if I hadn't have been... If I had been in the space where I was in the house when the storm had hit, I, I would probably not have been where I am today, be able to talk to you. And I, I testified of this to the men at the men's meeting. And uh, uh, this this storm has caused some pain and it has caused some discomfort. But I, I've actually been very thankful to the Lord that that He's He did the things in the in the the way in which He's done it, because. At, I can testify that I had actually become a little too comfortable in, in the world. I, I hadn't done anything that was abjectly immoral, but I think that the direction of my life had just kind of just moved off to off the path just a little bit. I had begun to tr trust a little too much in my life and in, in my family and in my job and just in the day-to-day -day things of life and just b become kind of distracted. And this whole storm was just kind of, kind of a wake up for me. And as I, as I came out of my house and I, I saw the tree that had fallen on my house and I looked at it, I turned around. It's almost like the Lord said, that's not your house. That's not your home. That's not where you live, you know. As I drove away from my house and I saw the subdivision behind me, that was a rich subdivision where all these doctors lived. It's just destroyed. It's, there's nothing there. It's like the, the Lord was telling me, this world is not your home. You know, and, and, and all, all the things that have happened to me and my wife in the, the past few weeks, we've we, we just become so much more sensitive of, of being what it means to be led by the Lord, to be sensitive to, sensitive to Christ to, in everything that you do, to, to live unto the Lord. And especially in this renewal, I've been more sensitive to it this year than I have in any previous year about how in every single message, it's like every single message has been dovetailed together. As a, 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 so many scriptures, we, we, it seems like all of our notes, we, we all had the same notes. It's like we all used so many of the same scriptures, but it wasn't, it wasn't redundant in any way. Everyone, every, everyone had a different perspective on it, and every, everyone's perspective was profitable. And it, it's just been so excellent. I know a few of the brethren, I, I know Brother Boyce, I think that's probably the best message I've ever heard you preach. I, I, I thought that was an excellent message last night, brother. I, that was, this, this year has just been very, very, very good for me. I wanted to testify that. The Spirit has provoked me to say these things about preaching and listening to preaching that I think I've said before, but there's something about our gathering this year and 
and uh, the, the, the uh, exceptional spirit of our meeting this year that's, that's provoked me again about it uh, because of the uh, circumstances in which I find myself now and the, opportunity, the, the opportunities that I have to speak. Some of you may not know that I have the opportunity to speak for the Lord publicly before someone uh, sometimes seven to ten times a week. Uh, every day at work, I speak for 10 to 15 to 20 minutes, uh, depending on the Spirit's leading. <laughs> uh, volunteers, believing volunteers that come to help in the ministry where I uh, manage the warehouse. And then, of course, the Juvie ministry that Debbie and I have sometimes uh, two hours a week. And then the preaching that I do for our fellowship here uh, at, the, at the house, the Word of Truth Fellowship. I, I often preach in a week more now than I did when I preached what, what we call full time. When I was empty. <laughs> when I had to really, really work and dig because I wasn't hearing anything. I was preaching to people who, couldn't, who would not and could not respond uh, for whatever reason. I was giving them everything that I could give them, which really wasn't very much compared to what I have now. And so the last... I must say, the last five years since we've moved back to the Joplin area, and I've been in the fellowship there every Lord's Day, every Wednesday, every other Friday, and the other meetings that we have and so forth, has filled me to overflowing. And then God has granted me then these opportunities to speak that I did not seek. They were just there. And someone said, would you do this? Well, you can't turn that down. And so th this, is, this is how God works, and, and, and the, the environment that we have among ourselves, all of you are familiar with this environment, is what gives those of us, and I've been preaching and speaking in public for 40 years. I started preaching when I was 15. I'm 55. I'll be 56 in two months. I've been preaching every Lord's Day for 35 years, except when I wasn't able to. And it's only been in the last five years that I've really had substantive things to say. Now, I've been coming to these meetings for uh, uh, about 15 years. But I was, this was the only place where I spoke to people who listened with their whole heart and responded then with their voices. And that's significant. You, you, you young preachers, you young preachers, Hearing the word yourself is what will uh, fortify and solidify the things that you have seen and heard. I, I testify of that with every, every uh, part of my being. <laughs> this is, I'm, I'm more and more persuaded this is how the kingdom works. Every part of the body adding to every other part of the body. I remember Brother Given talking about when he, when he moved to Joplin and uh, had a difficult time finding anyone to speak about the things of God. Now, in, brother, for, for years, Brother Boyce and I have talked about the things of the Lord when we saw one another periodically. When you see Brother Boyce, you always talk about the things of the Lord. And I looked for others to speak to, come to preachers' meetings. 15, 16, 18 preachers there, one man. Brother Boyce, until Brother Given came, there was one man to talk about the things of the Lord. Now, they all want to talk about churchy things. But listen, let, let me tell you, for a long time, I've been sick of churchy things, even when they were paying my salary. I want to talk about the things of the Lord is what renews our strength and makes us able to stand and walk and fly then and be renewed in the inner man. And I remember Brother Given talking about that, that, that he was going to, die on the vine <laughs> until we started the Friday night meeting where there was an opportunity for exchange then, a focus on the word and an opportunity for giving and receiving. And that's what strengthens and fortifies the heart of the teacher, speaking to those who when you look into their eyes, you know that they know what you're talking about. Even if they may not know all of it, they maybe can't make all the connections. There's life there. You see it. And, of course, they see it and hear it in you. And that's what fortifies and strengthens. And so that's a testimony that I wanted to encourage you and challenge you about. Thank you, brother. I guess uh, in general for these renewals, I'm not really sure when, in about nine or ten years. That's about my ninth or tenth renewal. 
And I remember our, vaguely our, my first renewal was in the Crown Point area. And the only reason I remember that is because I stayed with Sister Julie's mom and dad. And I was there alone. Lisa, my wife, couldn't get off, couldn't get off work. I was a believer. We was a believer for about two or three years, probably, before that, before I went to our first renewal. And that first renewal, and I don't have a clue what it was about or nothing like that, but the things that I remember and the things that impress on me most, as well as all of you, is sitting around the tables, eating not only food, but the Word of God, being fed and feeding. And I remember I was so impressed upon that because even though I was a new Christian and we've been in the church setting, I'd never experienced anything like that before in my life. And I'm sure every one of you can testify to the same thing. And I remember one of the, I got back home and I told my wife, I says, from now on, you're going with me whether you have to quit your job or not because it was that important to me. And I've, we've been to everyone since, okay? And <clears throat> the thing that I see that is important about these meetings is it provokes a godly jealousy in each and every one of us that you don't get out in the world. Out in the, like Brother Gene called it, churchy. You have the preacher that stands up there and everybody else is satisfied just sitting and coming to church every two weeks or every two hours, whatever it is. But here, in the Joplin area, in the Crown Point area, in the Fort Wayne area, in the Delaware area now, wherever we're from, there's a godly jealousy that is being built up in people yes. that everybody is wanting to dig in more. Yeah. They're not satisfied with just knowing the, the books of the Bible or the main stories of the Bible. They're wanting to dig in because that is what people love to hear. And I remember one of the first renewals sent down at, 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 a, at a table eaten. And somebody started talking about their work or whatever. I was offended. I was. And I don't see that much anymore. Like what somebody said, it's been growing very, very well. But I was actually offended thinking, well, I could get this back home. I could get this talking back at my house, you know. And like I said, it, it's, it's grown some too. But that's it. It provokes this godly jealousy. And... What this renewal this year has to offer, what Christ is doing for us, it is showing us that we can't live a godly life. We can't be accepted by God by the things that we do. It had to be through Christ. And the things that we learn here when we talk amongst the brethren... We are not satisfied with our status quo. Oh, I'm just a sinner and I'm saved by grace. It makes you, it prompts you to reach higher. That's it. Reach higher to God. And you can see that it is truly accessible. This be ye holy as I am holy. You can actually attain that. And that's what has really, listening and listening to all the brethren today and throughout this room, that is really has what impressed me about this renewal this year is that be holy as I am holy is attainable through Christ when we live in him. And this, and, and just to make real quick, this uh, verse I, don't want, I, don't, I want to kind of leave with, it's in Galatians 3. It says, uh, 326, for ye are all the children of God by faith in Jesus. Mm -hmm. For as many of you has been baptized into Christ, have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither bond nor free, there is neither male nor female. For ye are all one in Jesus, in Christ Jesus. And if ye be Christ's, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. 
And when I read that verse a little while ago, it made me think of, of the children of Israel before they, that they got out of Egypt. God told them to put the blood over their doorpost, okay? Because this death angel, this, this angel is going to come through and, and kill all the firstborn. It made me think every house, I'm getting excited, every house that had that blood over the doorpost could not be touched by that angel. It could not be touched. And as long as we have Christ on us, as long as we're covered in Christ, as long as we put on Christ, Satan can't touch us. Because why? Because we're walking in the Spirit. And if we walk in the Spirit, we will not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. There is no way Satan can touch you. And that's what these meetings bring out. It's not putting each other up on pedestals. Like what Sister Ada said, you know, we all have our favorites. You know, we truly do. You know, I do. But everybody is in unity. Mm -hmm. There is no division. We are the church. There is no denominations in this group. We are the body of Christ. And we are all, whether you're standing behind that pulpit, whether you're standing here, Sitting amongst each other, we're building each other up. And as long as we keep building each other up, we're not tearing each other down. And I just thought I'd leave us with that last thought of if ye are Christ, then ye are Abraham's seed. And, and you have that eternal promise. So, thank you. Um, hi. <laughs> Um, I'm Roxanne. This is my first uh, renewal, so it's been quite a trip, and um, I figured I'd give a testimony of a, a turning point in my life, and <sighs> sorry, my heart's like pounding like crazy, so. <laughs> All right. Jesus is strength. From the day he was born to the day he, of his final walk, broken and bleeding, bearing the cross on his back, to his death on the cross, even in his weakest state, he was the strongest. I have never once confused his strength being a physical feat. One, one strength of flesh is worthless compared to the spiritual strength that Jesus always had. I wish I had that strength, but I can't say that I have. My life... My so-called home, not once in my life did that home feel like home. The comfort, that love, that safety, the feeling of family welcoming you with open arms, the aroma of a nice, freshly cooked meal greeting you at the door. Not at this house. There was no dinner, no family to welcome you home. <laughs> safety was a joke. Comfort and love just didn't exist. I practically had no mother growing up since she was always at work, working long extra hours just to keep food on the table. She was our only source of income since my father snapped. My father's hatred for his so-called family was finally seen. He never wanted to be a father, never wanted to be married, and yet he ended up married to my mother and having two kids. His frustrations just could not be bottled anymore, and my mother was the first one to take the blow. I remember the first time he grabbed my mother by her throat, cursing and screaming at her from the top of his lungs. Holding my crying five-year-old sister in my shaking arms as I watched the violence unfold, I was only 10 years old. That was the first night The only night he took out his frustrations on my mother, since my father basically moved out and my mom was never home, my father took out his rage on the next one in line, me. I have some nights that I remember every single detail of the beatings, blood on the floor, glass on my skin, a broken table snapped from my back. But there are some things I just don't remember, I can't remember. It just got that bad. Years, years this went on in secret. Went to school in hoodies and pants covered up my marks. Rushed back to the house before my sister came home. 
took care of my sister, made dinner, ran the house, and when my father came to visit, I would hide my sister under the bunk bed and run out into the living room to take whatever he was about to dish out. I was so broken. My heart ached. My mind was so dark and my emotions were just shot. I just stopped caring about myself. Spiritually, I was dead. My mind at the time was best described as this thick black fog. I just couldn't think, I couldn't talk, and Jesus was just something that my parents didn't want to talk about. I knew there was a heaven. I knew there was a hell. I knew Jesus died for our sins, and I knew the common stories, but I was just never told that you can ask Jesus for help. You can pray for strength through the hard times, that you can actually look up to him. Even though I've never flat out asked God to help me, I felt like he already knew I needed his help, his guidance, his strength. Temptation was tugging on me, trying to find some sort of comfort for my dying heart. Filled my mind with these horrible, sickening thoughts. Hey, have a little alcohol. It'll take the pain away from your heart. You see, everyone in your class takes a swig from their parents' bottles. What makes you ever any different? I remember opening the cabinet from where the wine and stuff was stored and just stared at them. Something inside me just screamed it was wrong. And I listened and I shut the cabinets and I never again went towards those doors. Fighting off temptation was easy when it came to alcohol or cigarettes or anything of a common addict. Since I was such a young kid, I knew it was sick and I've seen the pain it has caused people around me. Plus, I wasn't old enough to begin with, so why would I even think that? The tough one, my toughest struggle was killing myself. I almost gave in. That horrible, sick, twisted thought just kept digging deeper and deeper into my mind. Who's going to miss you? Your mother? <laughs> she doesn't even know you half the time. Plus, why does she care? When was the last time she ever hugged you, let alone give a little pat on the shoulder of good job? You know your father would love the fact that you're gone. He'll be dancing on your grave when you're dead. And the, the most addicting part of it was, when you're dead, you get to see heaven and God. Naive as I was, it sounded really, really good. All this pain, both physical, mental, emotional pain, was just unbearable. I, I just couldn't take it, and no one seemed to care. People hated me, hid me, shunned me, spit on me. I had no true friends. I told them what was going on and they'd say something like, suck it up, it's not my problem. No one was gonna miss me anyways. Maybe my sister, but she was broken like me. If she wasn't broken like me, she would have been fine. I remember sitting at the kitchen table with a knife, picturing taking that blade and just running it down my arm, and something stirred within me. That thought scared me. How weak I was scared me. This is my life. This is the life that the Lord blessed me with, the body that was given to me, the body that was bought at a price, and I'm going to take God's gift and just destroy it? I remember sitting back thinking, what kind of a Christian am I? I found myself picking up a Bible and just opening it to a random page. I landed on Ecclesiastes 3. To everything there is a season and a time for every purpose under heaven. This is still one of my favorite scriptures to this day. A sign that God knows what he's doing. Everything in this life is in perfect balance. Everything is planned and well thought out. Everything has a purpose. Everything has a path. Uh, path. Everyone and everything is in balance. It is even listed a few examples right in front of you. Jesus had a path. Jesus was the balance for us. Jesus is our strength when we are weak. 
Jesus is our savior when we have sinned. Jesus was put on this earth to save us. He is our balance. And those words in Ecclesiastes are still true. About 10 years ago, I'm beaten up, broken, hurting in the most hate-filled environment. And now look at me. I'm here in Joplin, full of the most wonderful, loving, caring people I have ever met in my life. And what a blessing that is. What a blessing it is to be here, to learn, to live, to love, and to grow within Jesus Christ together as a family. And for the first time ever in my life, I feel like I'm home. It's been quite a road getting here. I remember only, what was it, a year? Maybe going on two years from now. I was just uh, releasing my feelings and like types of stories, I guess, because nobody would listen. Not even my congregation at my church would listen to me. I mean, I was young. Who would listen to a kid that complains all the time? <laughs> so I wrote these stories, and for the first time, I posted them online. And someone commented on those stories. And she started telling me a little bit about her fellowship out here in Joplin. And we, we started connecting, and she started telling me her just this unbreakable faith that she had and everything that she learned here. It's just, it, it was incredible. I, I wanted it. I craved it. I mean, it was nothing like my church at all. And I wanted to go. And all of a sudden, I had this drive that I needed to come to Joplin. Thank you, Logan. Thank you a lot. If it wasn't for you, I wouldn't be here. And if it wasn't for Logan, I wouldn't have never met Given and certain lucky others on Facebook that I befriended. <laughs> um, and then one day I got a random note that says, hey, you know half of my family, you're younger than me, <laughs> and yet I've never met you. Oh, I'm Paul, by the way. And if it wasn't for you, Paul, I probably would not have been able to make it here because I couldn't afford it. Uh, Paul Blakely uh, insisted in uh, driving me down to Joplin so that I wouldn't have to pay $800 to fly all the way out here from New York. So, both you, Logan, and Paul, and Given, and a few members of the congregation, and God himself, I'm just truly, truly blessed and touched to be here today. And it's just been an incredible experience. And when's next year's? <laughs> so... I can never thank you guys enough. So. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you very much. I did want to express how much these renewals mean to me. Many years ago, well, 20, 23, 22 years ago, probably about 23. I decided I'd, I'd try and marshal some of the uh, older ministers that I knew, preachers, that were being kind of pushed out in favor of the of younger, younger leaders. And I, I contacted 40, 42 of them. I won't name them for you, but you know a lot of them. They were well-known men, ranged from college presidents to they were well-known men, Bible men. And I determined first I wanted to find out if they, uh, if they knew they had eternal life. I thought surely they will know that. 
These are all people over 60. 42. So I come right out and ask them by the telephone if they knew. Three of them knew. My father was one. Don DeWilt was one. And uh, Carl Ketcherside was the other. Three of them, the other 42. But I knew why. It wasn't because they uh, were disinterested. It's because they were caught in a religious system that this just isn't the kind of stuff you talk about. So they were busy with administrative things and how to build schools and how to build Sunday schools and so forth. So I made it my target to call several of them every day and bring them up to speed. So they let me install a watch line. That doesn't mean anything today, but back in that day, it was a line you called for nothing, you know. So they installed a watch line, and I called these people. And they did. And most of them, they come up to speed in about two, three weeks. They're all right. They're right in there. And I asked them to write one short paragraph that defined the gospel and send it to me. And I said, then I'll, I'll know where you're at when I read it. Oh, there were some phenomenal statements. They were very, very good. The uh, purpose of the, that was to publish a magazine, which I, I forgot to bring them again this year, but it was called Refreshing Waters Magazine. It was 40 pages long, and these men were going to contribute articles focusing on the gospel, the nature and content of the gospel. That was our absolute focus. In the process, I thought, you know, I think it'd be good to have like a gathering like that. So I talked it over with my father. He said, well, yeah, I don't think there's anything really like this. Let's, let's, let's do it. Yeah, do that. So we did. I think 1990 was the first one, Jeffersonville, Ohio. And we started it. Now, during those early renewals, I'd preach two or three of the sermons myself because uh, they weren't trained to candidate that many preachers. And some of these men that were good men, Bible-believing men, learned men, but they ran out of gas at about five renewals. They, they were still talking about the same thing. So I had to, I had to tell them, well, we can't use you anymore. You are too stale that we're going to have to develop. We're going to have to develop some preachers. Now, brethren, in my experience in the church, and I've preached since 1953, I, try, I did try and work within the institution. I gave it the old college try. From a young man, I knew that the body of Christ was intended to work interdependently. It, so I did, I preached full time for three, four churches. Some of them were pretty large. They didn't believe this. I could have settled in for a rather lucrative career, as a matter of fact. But I said, I'm not going to do this. And so we. I started another fellowship. I just started one myself. And we had some preachers come out of that, some good teachers. Brother Rich was there. Sister Karen was there. In the early 60s. You weren't you were there, weren't you? In the early 60s. All right, now I'll bring up the renewals here. Every year, like somebody new gets to speak. I'm hearing young men preach things that these old men that we started out with, they didn't have the faintest idea about those things. I'm telling you the truth now. I'm not just being critical here. I'm talking about Bible college presidents, Bible college professors, Bible college scholars, Greek scholars, Hebrew scholars. They'd have to take a back seat at this renewal. They do not know what we were talking about. 
but these young men do. What does that tell you? What, well, it's not what I've thought of for a long time, but this interdependency of the body, and if I wonder that this is happening here, and I can tell you up front, listen, brother, and there's people in the world that know this that have come from Africa and other foreign countries that are my home and have sat in my home and said there isn't any place like this in the world. That was said by Samuel Thomas this year in our home. He's a world traveler, and he lives in India, and he said there isn't anything like this, at least as publicly known. I'll qualify it by that. That's publicly known. There isn't any place. I asked several missionaries in town, do you? know of a foreign church that's stable and mature. Nobody has told me they do. I'm telling you the truth, Doug. I'm not, just, I'm not exaggerating anything here. They're all on an infant basis. Now, a lot of them have strong faith. All right, so we've got brethren that have traveled into foreign countries and they can testify to you. They have a strong faith no question about it. But so far as their comprehension is concerned, they are babies. That's not what's happening here. This could happen there also. And when we work for those people, we try and bring them along like this. So you witnessed, you have witnessed over the years something happen that millions of Christians have never one time in their entire life have seen something like this. Amen. Where there's young, there's old, there's men, there's women, there's professional people, there's unprofessional people, there's educated people, there's uneducated people. But I can guarantee you, you don't know who's who. Amen. Huh? If we were to tell you, let all the, how many of you know how many engineers are here? You have the faintest idea, but there are some here. That's the body of Christ. So the renewal provides a venue where that can happen. Now the last uh, the last two years have been difficult for me, very frustrating because I'm not able to do what I normally have been able to do. I haven't give up, nothing. <laughs> it's got this bad, instead of working 16 hours a day, I gotta whittle it down to about 12, and then I have to sandwich a couple of naps in there and this sort of thing. But if there wasn't this environment where other people are picking up the baton and moving along, you know, with it, I don't know if I could survive this I really don't. So I, I stand in a profound appreciation of everyone that's advanced here, thrown themselves into the work. We have 10 preachers at our fellowship that preach regularly in rotation. They all get to preach every Sunday. I've tried to teach them and other people see this is better to have one substantive message than 10 hot air sermons. And I can tell you, if you hear them, you'll hear substantive, there's substantive messages. And after every message, we give the audience a chance to tell what they thought of the message. How'd you like to implement that in the average church? Huh? And then we have an exhortation. And we have thing, opportunities for whoever has something to say that can we we'll give, if they just know a little, there's a venue where they can just say a few things. It's the body of Christ. And here, this is our billboard. <laughs> the Freshy Waters Riddle is our billboard that what we're talking about works. I wanted to also um, testify of a little bit of what's gone on in the last month and also relate it to the renewals. I'm not gonna give an account of the exact events, um, but that, it was recorded if anybody wants to hear from other testimonies that happened. But I wanted to bring out two things that I've learned from these um, past events. 
One thing is um, when this, when that tornado came through, Brother Jeremy and I had no idea. Um, the, the severity of this storm, what was coming, until it was over. And so uh, what we can learn from that in the spiritual realm, sometimes a trial can come just that fast, and you, and you won't see it coming. But the Lord is faithful. He knows what's coming, and he will keep you in it. Um, in times of peace... If you are faithful in seeking the Lord, he will keep you when the storm comes. Um, another thing I saw, my whole home shook. Literally, I mean, well, the whole thing was demolished. But, um, you know, everything was shaking. And where my family were, my whole entire house moved eight feet. We were in it and moved with the house. But after it was all done, the things that were precious to me is what came out of that house. <laughs> my husband and my kids. Everything else, um, it, you know, so what? It was the precious things that remained. The Lord is going to shake the heavens and the earth again. And what you're sowing to is what is going to, it's going to show who you are. You're going to sow to the spirit. These renewals are times of peace that we can seek the Lord. These are times that we can sow to the spirit. So when that great and terrible day of the Lord comes, the only thing that's going to remain standing are the things that uh, Christ worked in, the things that he did here. And so um, when, we are, when we are his, he's going to make sure that you come out of that. The, the wrath of the Lord isn't going to consume us. Amen. It'll only take away what we didn't want to begin with. See, yes. another thing, this is, wasn't in my notes, some of these things that you acquire in your house kind of become burdensome because you have so much of it. And um, it's kind of been stripped away, and we don't have a whole lot. And in a house with eight people, you can get a lot of stuff. And, but like I said, the things that came out were the precious things. It was the life that came out. Um, our renewal theme is what Christ has accomplished on our behalf. I'll tell you, brethren, Christ is the one that made a way for us to remain when God confronts humanity. When he comes back... Um, we will be able to remain. Um, so what is precious to you? If Christ is precious to you, um, we are gonna, that's going to be a great, and that will be a joy for us that day. Um, kind of going through that experience was kind of um, somewhat scary because you didn't know what was going on, and we still didn't know the severity of it until we came out of that hole. Um, and just saw the devastation. But, um, you know, the Lord was faithful. He was merciful to us. He kept us. And even in the events afterwards, we have seen his hand in, in so many things afterward. And I wanted to give thanks also to all your, brother, all your brethren here for the gifts that you sent. Um, to all the brethren who um, lost their homes so for the Sims and for the Cobbs and for ourselves. Um, I wanted to read a scripture to you in Matthew 25 40 because you didn't just minister to us you ministered to Christ himself it says and the king shall answer and say unto them verily I say unto you inasmuch as ye have done it unto one of the least of these my brethren ye have done it unto me so I um, am thankful for that for you guys for your um, love and helping us but also wanted to confirm that you did minister to the body and to Christ himself. Part of learning to crucify the flesh and become like God is you have to accept the way that he is going to lead you. You have to be able to say, Lord, by your will, not mine. And a couple of couple weeks before this whole tornado thing happened, um, I went outside and I just poured my heart out to God asking that he would open my eyes to reality, that I would feel his leading, I would feel his presence. 
and that he, I, I just confessed I didn't care how he would bring this to pass. I knew that he would give me grace, whatever it was, and to help in the time I need, but that my eyes would be open to the reality of what we were going through in this world. And um, because, you know, I didn't, want to, I didn't want to be lulled to sleep or pushed back by pain or anything, uh, but I wanted to be bold and courageous and encourage, an encouragement to the brethren to shine as a light as we are told to do and to know that I was the Lord's without a doubt. And I prayed this knowing that this renewal was coming up very quickly. And I prayed that this time especially would be an eye-opener for me. And it was May 22nd that the Lord began to answer that prayer. Now being inside a tornado that as men has, have car- categorized as the biggest one, if you being inside that and if you don't wake up, you know, spiritually after that, something's wrong with you. And you can't, you just can't forget something like that, going through that, especially when God is there the whole time with you saying, telling your heart and your mind, peace, be still, I am with you, I'm not going to leave you. And one of the first thoughts that I had, as I'm sure many had, was I was going to die. And, but it didn't scare me. Instead, my life flashed before my eyes. It was kind of like a movie reel where you have those little pictures of each millisecond and it just rushed in front of my eyes. And as it was, I was thinking, trying to look for something that was going to pop up and be frowned upon and saying, look at that, you're not going to be within. But instead, my baptism stood up. And most of my memory has been in Joplin, in the fellowship, being able to speak, being around brethren, growing in the Lord. And that instead helped keep my mind and kept me sane (laughs) during those moments. And something I learned from that was that every moment, every moment counts. Because all those moments were flashed in front of my eyes. And so every single one of those moments, I was looking through, through them. Every moment counted. And that is true with God. And this renewal, I have spoken the most to anyone than I have really had personally. And the brethren especially are Brother Dave and Brother Eric, Sister Eva, Sister Anna, and um, the Paulus sisters were around the table during the dinner time we were talking. And it's just wonderful because before I've, I, before I've come away from the renewal being sad and almost like mad at myself because I didn't specifically talk to the brethren, take advantage of the opportunity that I had to personally minister and build each other up with certain brethren. And because like for me, meeting new people is kind of hard. And, but the Lord, he can give you grace for this. Look at them after the spirit, not after the flesh. And so in between the preaching time, we have these opportunities to continue to fellowship together. And it's not for a social thing. It's not a social opportunity. It's an opportunity to be even more built up and edified. So I wanted to exhort you, brethren, to seize every moment for the edification of yours and others' faith and for the glorification of your God. Because in Christ, we're free. We're not bound to formality and just sitting in church for a couple hours with one preacher behind the pulpit. We can talk anytime with anyone about the Lord. And that the Lord, in going through this hard time with the tornado, he has given me a testimony that I could give. People of you brethren have come up to me and asked me about it. And I have been able to give you the testimony that Christ gave me that he brought me out alive and still in him. So every moment counts, and the next one, it can be your very last. Every single one of us in this world, we're going to have a last moment. And don't you want it to be you being doing the Lord's work, you being aware that you're doing the Lord's work, And you doing it, actually doing it with your whole heart and your soul and your mind and your strength. 
So this renewal, it really lives up to its name. And so I wanted to exhort you to let your lights so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your God, which is in heaven. Amen. I feel like from time to time is, uh, I need to come up and, and sort of kind of touch base with the brethren, uh, considering the circumstances uh, and how we came about and uh, the fellowship and things like this. And in view of our brethren who have recently come in the last few years and our brethren has uh, uh, come back or come into the assembly and this renewal, the first time I've met them anyway. But you know that um, I'm reluctant to even talk about these kind of things because I'm really so kind of bitter about why I'm, I got a kind of late start. <laughs> you know, uh, because I do, I've got a late start on these things. And uh, I, so we, uh, and it, without giving a big long testimony, you know, you're well aware that it was about 2001, two, three, that we contacted uh, the fellowship. And, and so in 2006, we came up for our first uh, renewal. And as we began to shut down things uh, in Georgia, the Lord kept opening them up. As fast as we shut them down, the Lord would open them up, and then we get a little back. So you know, He was just waiting for us to shut these things down, and so we could He could open them up. And then, of course, you know that's the way faith operates. God's going to open it up after you shut it down, and that kind of thing. So um, we come up here. We closed on the house actually in Joplin that same day, and they had uh, we got there early, but they had detained us for a long period of time. We made the trip. Anyway, and, and uh, we were at Crown Point in 2006, and I, we gave our first testimony there. Um, I'll tell you, uh, I, when I met up with the brethren here, I didn't know anything, really, about, uh, about the truth. I'm talking about the truth. Now, we, I had a lot of Greek. Yeah, I had a lot of Greek and Hebrew, hermeneutics, all like that. But see, I had to throw all that in the trash, basically. Sorry about that. You know, but that's the truth of it. And I uh, didn't learn anything. All the Bible colleges, you know, I, I could have, <clears throat> don't get me wrong, now I could have maintained, I could be at fault because I didn't stay in this, in the, um, I'm going to call it a system, don't mean to be offensive, I could have stayed in that, you know, and, 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 and managed in there, but see, I think God wanted to keep me somewhere else. Anyway, you know, God works things out, but now, uh, I, I don't, nobody, none, none of the brethren ever want to become stale in the Lord. That's probably our greatest fear. We want to keep moving. Okay, and we want to. We always want to put in, put ourselves in a position that will advantage us. We want to hug up and get next to the brethren that we uh, we we see that has something, and so that's that's the nature of faith. And so and the, so I see these renewals as now God has given brethren everywhere if they want to take advantage of three days. Okay, the, the, it's, it's going to be saturated times when we if you've got Satan at bay over here, very little Satan, and, uh, and you can just make rapid gains. So this is on top, okay, on the gain you can make in your own assembly if you'll take advantage of all your meetings and participate. Uh, uh, when I'm, I, I've, I've, I've really learned a lot about the Lord. Basically, I've, I've come to understand God and his relationship to the Son and that his eternal purpose and I, began, I have actually witnessed, brethren, the ministry of the saints and how brethren can grow. I've actually watched this. And it ain't been easy, okay? Uh, it's been a lot of uh, things to put up with, mainly my own flesh. But uh, so I, I wanted to get up and testify that, you know, I joined up with the brethren in 2003, I think. I've made the first in rule in 2006, and it's been a glorious it's been glorious. And you're right, exactly right, Sister June. I can see it in a short period of time. That there's been a, there's been a, there's, it's just been a, uh, you got to sit back and look at it, but you can see how the, how the complexion of the group has changed. Yeah. And uh, we've been, our, our focus is more defined. Mm -hmm. I think it's, you know, I think we're, uh, I think it's good. And, uh, and, I, and I, I praise the Lord for it. And I, I'm looking forward to finding out really what he's going to do with the brethren here and, and everything. And, and uh, so uh, thank you. I want to thank you, brethren, each and every one of you that's helped me to see so many things and, uh, and added to our faith. Thank you. First of all, I want to thank the Lord for answered prayer. We had prayed uh, many weeks about the safety of the brethren. 
and um, he answered our prayer. And then I came back from visiting up in uh, northern Indiana, had the opportunity to visit with the Banner Truth Brethren, and I had asked uh, the Sankowski Brethren if they could make it, and, and they would, weren't able to make it. Uh, so they're not with us now, but they would have liked to have been with us. But um, they had other things that they had to do. And so, but well, I come back and I had to give that bad news to Brother Given. And, and, but I can remember it after at the end of that, I can remember saying, but you know, the Lord, he can do impossible things. Well, they called and um, <laughs> the Lord did something that was great. He opened up a way. And, um, but see, now they still had to be faithful to walk into that way. And I, I praise God for answered prayer. He's able to do things above and beyond what we even would dare ask. But even imagine God can answer that. And um, I mean, I, I, everyone that knows me knows that the renewal holds a special place for me. The first two renewals, I was in the world, and but they were recorded. Brother Rich was faithful to do that. Brother Rich here. And... Um, I, my mother got a copy of that and gave it to me, and I thought it was not worthy of my time, so I hid it behind the television, and then the Lord broke my heart, took everything away, but I had these videos, and since I was alone, I thought, what could it hurt? So I put them on, and it changed my world. It changed everything. So reason why I wanted to bring that up is because I want to now give you an advertisement. Right now on YouTube, we have over 2,600 segments of the gospel. 2,600 segments of gospel preaching on YouTube right now. But why is the world in the condition it's in? That's right there. You click on the button, it, the gospel's preached to you right there. Well, because there's great disinterest, all right? It's there, nonetheless. Now, I've come to know that some people don't like to go to YouTube because there's some bio stuff there. So now we've set up another server. It's called Vimeo, and we're on there. And so now there's no defilement there. You go there, and it's just the videos. I say this because these renewals are going to appear there first before they're ever available on DVD. Then they'll come out on DVD. And you're, anyone who wants them, why, do we, why am I saying this? Is it just an advertisement because we charge so much for them? If... Um, if you, if you want to send somebody to hear something clear, send them there. I tell you this, this, it's not, this is not normal preaching. I know you all know this, but these messages hold something in them that can change people's lives. I know it changed my life because God was in the message, a faithful brother was recorded it, and my mother passed it on to me. And so why am I saying this? I'm exhorting you to, if, to send somebody a link to this. Send somebody a DVD. Entrust it to them and then give it to them with prayer. And look what God can do. God can change people. It's what he does. And, but he's going to do it through the body. Now God's broken my heart again. I've had to come to grips with the fact that I'm not the greatest speaker. <laughs> I know. It's terrible, isn't it? I mean, everyone here is going to have to... You know, if you find somebody around you that speaks clearer than you, then promote them. Do it. You don't have to be the one to say it. If, you, if you're around someone that's saying it better, promote them. That means you're going to have to not promote you now. But if you'll promote them, someone that's saying it better... Someone is saying it clear, the message will get out. See? So sometimes God makes you a promoter. You can promote someone else that's preaching the gospel. And I think that's what's happened here. Over the years, God's, God's worked with me. Now, I know this is next to impossible. But he has worked with me and shown me different people that have different aspects of the gospel that I never understood. I never saw it. And now... I can try to say it just like them, or I can send people <laughs> to them. Well, anyway, it's the latter's worked out much better for me. We've been in the quarry of the Lord, listening to the sound of the hammer and the chisel. 
This is the only place where the hammer and chisel is heard. Once we cross over, then the hammer and the chisel will be, the Lord will put those away. Because when the, when the stones go to the temple, they're already fitted and they'll fit right in. So we're going to take a short break. Uh, Brother Ricky has a message this afternoon that he's going to bring us. And so we'll start again uh, with a song. So when you hear the music, uh, we'll gather again. Father in heaven, we're thankful for this time. We're thankful <clears throat> that you allow us to share uh, the truth with one another. And we pray that you would continue to teach us to uh, be ministers of one another and lovers of the Lord and of the truth. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> 